Hey everybody, Eads Ray here, and I am back with another review. I know it has been quite a long time since I've done a review. I just put up a video last night apologizing for my absence. I took a break, thought I told everybody, and I was wrong. I, I made a mistake. Now that being said, I am back here to review the new Black Bear album, Everything Means Nothing. Now, Black Bear, where do I think, or what do I think about Black Bear? Anybody that knows my reviews knows that I always go into a little bit of background in pretty much all of my reviews. I gotta say, with Black Bear, I've been somewhere in the middle with him for quite a while now. Uh, his debut, I believe, back in 2015, I actually did enjoy quite a bit. I, I thought it was um, a good, fresh sound. I, there was something about the mixture of... Some of the more pop elements with a very atmospheric, big-sounding production. A very dreamy-sounding production. With a bit of auto-crooning and a bit of pop-trap vibes throughout. Um, that might not be the best way to describe his music. But that was sort of um, something that I picked up on. Now, this sound, if he was far from being the first person to ever do it. But he was one of the more early artists to really go head over heels into this style. Artists like Post Malone would really go head over heels as well and make it even bigger and um he's done stuff since then obviously but i kind of did lose track of it i never really kept up too close but i did with the anticipation of this release sort of go back and um you know re-listen to some of those older projects and all of that now i also kind of knew that a lot of these style of artists do bring in much more emotional, much more um, personal lyrics, much more on the pop side, but oftentimes very introspective, which is a big change from a lot of the more less pop trap out there, some of the more aggressive music, hip hop and pop out there. And I honestly don't like calling this hip hop because it's so far detached from it that I don't think it really is right to call it that. But I've noticed that Black Bear... And a lot of these type, type of artists have inspired this wave of uh, more popular pop artists to be more introspective and, and uh, more personal. And I actually will give Black Bear some credit for that because he was one of the earlier artists to go about doing that. But before I dive deep into the track list, I want to talk about some positives and some negatives of the overall sound. And once I start going in depth there, I could easily start picking out songs that fit what I'm trying to explain. For a negative, to kick this off, because unfortunately there was a bit of negative that I felt with this album, the whole album feels like it has a really forced summer vibe to it, and um, that's a hard thing to describe because, you know, what am I necessarily talking about by f a forced summer vibe? Well, there's a lot of music out there that is made to be played at parties, you know? And a lot of party music is pretty good. But, hear me out, a lot of party music feels weird when it's taken out of context of a party. And this is what I get from this album. Except what I get is a much more summery, much more flowery, much more uh, fun, youthful, just like sunny vibes throughout this entire album. And, well, I don't think that is inherently a negative thing. I think it is a bit, uh, I'm not sure if I really like this, this sound. Because, quite frankly, it's not summer, at least in where I'm from. And already I'm starting to feel that the album feels like it's already outdated. And I know that sounds weird, but I can't imagine this album getting airplay that much in the winter. And, and this is a weird argument to, to start off a review with. I get that. But I feel like part of the reason why I get this feeling comes from the fact that that it mixes your everyday pop trap beats with a bit of emo flair to it. Now, you may be saying, how is that summer? Well, in the summer, you know, it's very teenage. It's very um, emotional for a lot of people. It's very fun and energetic. And a lot of those energies from the more emo, more pop punk music really does translate over. And while I like that, it's... I'm not sure if it all comes together as well as intended because it's not only the little bit of trap and a little bit of emo in there it's also a bit of uh synth pop there's multiple tracks in there that have you know synth bass throughout as well as just synth leads throughout and some of them ended up being executed better than others and uh, i will say i did like that blend of the more pop trap 
sound with that synth pop. That was a really nice touch. I did enjoy that quite a bit. And I honestly do feel like some of this does give me a bit of uh, flashbacks to last year with Post Malone's album, Hollywood's Bleeding. Um, it does kind of bring up those sounds and vibes a lot. But lyrically, where does this thing fall? Um... Well, it's very melodramatic, and that's not necessarily a criticism. Melodramatic is not inherently a bad thing in music. Oftentimes, some of the best emo albums, uh, some of the best emotional albums are very melodramatic. But there are times when it's melodramatic and written in a way that's very uh, cliche, very stereotypical melodramatic to the point where it just feels a bit odd. And um, I will say that, that I'll get to that later when I get into specific tracks. But I will give this album a big plus here for the production. Great production. Great pop production. That's to be expected. Most art albums from artists this big have pretty good production. But I will say this is one of the best ones I've heard this year in a production sense. So now, let's dive into some of the tracks. I'm going to cover most of them. Maybe not all of them. But this album opens up with Hot Girl Bummer and the follow-up track... The me and your ghost, and right off the bat, I kind of get hit in the face with something that is just very meh. I'm not, I, it took me a long time to even build any feelings for these songs. Now, that might sound really harsh. Let me explain. Hot Girl Bummer has some real strong pop punk vibes in there, and I'm not necessarily sure I like that as a kickoff to the album. And it kind of does have still have a bit of pop trap in there. And the other track, Me and Your Ghost, is also has that emo-ness to it. But that's it's one of the tracks that brings in that synth pop. And it has some pretty standard modern emo lyrics that you get. Very melodramatic, like I stated. But these two songs, I just do not like the fact that he opened up it with these two songs. Um, they aren't bad. These are far from being, I think, the worst songs on here. No, they're average middle-of-the-road tracks for me. But what it looks like to me from a musician standpoint and from a l record label standpoint, they probably shoved these in the beginning because they are some of the most pop-friendly songs on this thing. And um, unfortunately, these songs ended up leaving me less than amazed. And the album would dip a little deeper into that disappointment on track three, Queen of Broken Hearts. Probably one of my least favorite songs on this album. Uh, I can see it being a big pop hit. It has that appeal. It could be annoyingly catchy. I get that. But ska guitar? You're really going to throw some... You're really going all in on the pop punk that you're going as far as throwing some ska guitar in there. Um, okay. I just really don't think it was executed the best. I don't think it fits. And I think this is a trend that pops up throughout this album. There are a lot of things that in theory would make a fun, nice summer album. But in reality, end up falling on its face just because it's odd. However... I do think the production helps this track out a bit. Queen of Broken Hearts is one of the tracks that I think does have some of the best production. So at the end of the day, I was not left like with my ears bleeding. I didn't hate the song, but it just feels so um, forced, so out of place. Now with all that negative out of the way, things start to pick up a little bit in the middle half of this album, I will say. This is definitely the best part of the album. I Feel Bad might be my favorite song on this album. It's the best overall vibe and atmosphere i think of any of these songs it has some good synth and guitar effects throughout it some really kind of abstract synth and synth strings and distorted little guitar leads throughout and the drumming and the overall uh beat and melody does remind me a bit of 21 pilots on blurry face a little bit but overall i think that this song is the best executed i wish that more of the songs were executed as well as this it has some of those more unique more um, innovative sounds from the synth and little guitar like slides in there. I think that the the unique sound pattern and soundscapes on I Feel Bad are really good and I wish the rest of the album had that. And luckily it does transition into the next song, I Feel Too Much, which is another highlight for me. Another song that I really enjoyed quite a bit. I Feel Too Much has this really nice vocator or vocator effect. I never know how to pronounce that word. I am deeply sorry. Kind of, and this is another word I don't know how to pronounce. Emma Godin Heap. The one that does hide and seek. That song has that effect on it. And this song does kind of remind me of that quite a bit. I Feel Too Much overall is a pretty, um, like I Feel Bad. <laughs> Funny how they're so similar in title. 
have very similar, uh, unique sounds throughout. And I actually really like those two tracks a lot because they definitely do show that he was going out of his way, or at least his producers were going out of his way to be a bit more innovative on these songs and bring extra sounds in and different little, different little tidbits to spice it up. However, I will say that this high point of the album doesn't last too long. Sobbing in Cabo is just, it's like a weird blend of reggaeton and pop punk. Clown has a very weak feature on it that I felt didn't add anything to it. He probably could have done a better job himself. And the other song I'll cover is Why Are Girls. And to me, it sounds like a generic version of Sunflower by Post Malone. And if you're catching up on the, the direction I'm going in this review, the later half of this album definitely kind of falls off quite a bit. Uh, fall off in quality for sure. I think the songwriting gets a bit more weak or maybe it just gets a bit exhausting after a while. And at the end of the day, those songs I just mentioned, I didn't hate them, but it's just, it's kind of disappointing after I hear I feel bad, I feel too much, two songs that I enjoy quite a bit. So unfortunately, I will say the quality of this album does drop quite a bit towards the end. So at the end of the day, where do I feel, how do I feel this competes with his other music? How do I think um, it is in today's music world? Well, in 2015, I would, I would say Black Bear was a lot more innovative than he is in 2020. In many ways, I feel like this album is playing to many of the strength he knows he has and doesn't really decide to do anything much further. It's a pretty standard pop album, and I don't expect him to be breaking the barrier and be making anything that, like, whoa. But I do expect him to be a bit more advanced at this point, to have a bit more songs that are more down the line of I feel bad, I feel too much, with those extra details that add just so, so much. And unfortunately, I don't get that from this album. I don't think that he necessarily put his all into it. And much like how Lil Uzi Vert was one of the pioneers of his sound back around 2016, Lil Uzi Vert now is just rehashing the same ideas. And I feel the same about Black Bear. And I have settled on giving this album a solid... Get ready... A solid 5 out of 10. See, anybody that knows my reviews knows anything above a 5 is good and anything below a 5 is bad. So a 5 is not a bad review, but it's also not a good review. It's dead center. I had very mixed feelings on this album. The overall vibe of it, the overall, uh, I mean, the overall production and atmosphere of the album, I did quite enjoy. But the overall subject matter, the forced summer vibes on this album, really turned me off in a lot of spots. And... I do enjoy Blackbeard. I think he is uh, he is one of the innovators of the style of music you hear all the time nowadays. And I wish that he would use that role to progress it forward instead of rehashing the same ideas. And unfortunately, well, when you have artists like Post Malone, Khaled, and so many others that have similar sounds to this, that have come after Blackbeard and really just improved upon the sound and really took it to the next level, I feel like Blackbeard is sort of lagging behind in many ways, and unfortunately I give this a solid 5. For what it's worth, it is what it is. It's not a bad album, I don't despise it, but I just have a feeling it could have been much better. That is it for now, Black Bear. That's it. Goodbye. 5 out of 10.